Coming up on this edition of Flash Talk, brought to you by Brian Heing and Cooling, we talk women's gymnastics at the NCAA Regionals. Head coach Bryce Biggin is in to talk about his team, as is head coach Jeff Duncan as we talk hardball, as our baseball team is at home this weekend and next Tuesday. The voice of the fan, DJ Smills, presenting some vibes, will tell his backstory. Z Grace is on the set for the first time, and we wrap the show with Women's Lacrosse Senior Day. Assistant head coach Amanda Glass talks about the upcoming Senior Day ceremony on Sunday. Plus, a look around Kent State sports. That's all coming up in a flash. Welcome back into our Flash Talk studios. As always, we're brought to you by Brian Hing and Cooling. Dan Griffin talking some gymnastics with head coach Bryce Biggin. And coach, it feels fantastic to be talking gymnastics this time of year because that means you guys are competing at a high level. And first and foremost, congratulations for that. Thank you, Dan. Yeah, it's, um, this meet is one that you truly have to earn throughout the entire season. And I think that's why it means so much to us because it really kind of verifies that we have been a really solid team all year, and um, we're, we're just really excited about the opportunity. Well, in case you, you hadn't noticed and, and didn't see, the uh, Flash is ranked 23rd in the nation qualified for the regionals. They're heading to Ann Arbor, where it's the first quad is going to be you, Penn State, Michigan, and Alabama. So that's uh, pretty cool that you get to go up against uh, some of the, the power fives, but you're, you're a three seed and, and, and uh, one to be reckoned with. Yeah, you know, this is a meet where truly anything can happen. Obviously, we have some pretty good memories from Michigan from years ago. So at, at this meet, really, it's all about going out, trusting yourself, making routines. And if you if you make routines, then you're going to give yourself an opportunity to potentially advance. You guys, uh, obviously, an abbreviated spring break did give the, the kids a, a little bit of time off. But talk about the, the week of preparation and, and how you try to coach them up that this is – simply another quad meet and nothing more nothing less yeah that's that's truly what the focus has been on is not trying to go any harder this week it's more about trying to relax enjoy the opportunity that's in front of them um, because once again they earned this right to move on now it's a matter of if we try and do something different than we have all season we're going out of our comfort zone they've been really good just relaxing taking one routine at a time, one event at a time, and that's really kind of all we've been preaching all, all season and all week. Beam has been one of the it, – it's evolved so much this, this past year for your team. Like you said, you get it out of the way because it's hard enough. It, 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 I mean, it's a balance beam for a reason. It's what, what, four inches wide, six inches wide? Inches wide. Um, and that can kind of weigh in the back of your mind if that's the thing you close on. But if you open on it – you get it, like you said, you get it out of the way, you clear it, and you go and, you go and enjoy the rest of the meet. Yeah, it really is. I think I know our team would much rather start on it and then finish on it because we do. We set the bar, and if we can set the bar where we feel like this team potentially can go, then we put a lot of pressure on everyone else. And, you know, to be able to finish on beam is a tough thing. That To me, that last, that last rotation has got to be the toughest one because you have that in the back of your mind, all right, well, we need to score this as a team. And if, if you're going to be over-focused on a beam, then you can press, and the next thing you know, you've, you've fallen probably a couple of times. Very easy. Well, Coach, talk, I, one thing that sticks out uh, to me as, you, as we, we talk about this team is the, is the depth. You don't have anybody that truly does the, the all-around competition. And to me, that means that there's competition at each of the four uh, different – of rotations to where you you've got basically aces in the hole at, at every single position and that's a wonderful thing to have it is one of the one of our strengths this whole year has been our depth and to be able to have girls that are still competing against with each other to earn spots in the lineup it just continues to keep our team sharp i think and they they realize that they have to Number one, be really good. They have to be consistent, but it has to happen week in and week out. And to be able to have those girls pushing each other in a positive way just continues to make our team better all year. Yeah, because it, it like any any sport, if you've got somebody that just goes, well, I already know that I'm in the uh, in the lineup. It, I'm not going to say that they, that ruins the the week of preparation or anything like that. But if you've got if you're constantly looking over your shoulder, going, well, I've got to bring it every morning in practice, every afternoon in practice, and then obviously in the warm-ups and the meet itself, 
Otherwise, my spot isn't guaranteed anymore. I think that, like you said, pushes everybody to a, a new level. Yeah, and also, you know, you realize that if something would happen, say an injury or someone gets sick or something's just off, we feel like we have people that are ready to go in that aren't going to lose us anything. Well, it gets all get started on Thursday, and uh, let's advance on to the weekend, and let's, uh, let's win this darn thing. That's the goal. Coach, best of luck. We'll be rooting for you, and uh, go get them up in Michigan. Thank you. Welcome back into our Flash Talk studios. We're brought to you by Brian Heing and Cooling Dan Griffin, talking some hardball with head ball coach Jeff Duncan. And, and coach, uh, calendar turns to April, but we're still looking at snow in the forecast. It's the, kind of the nature of the beast in, in your sport, but we're looking forward to a big home weekend with Eastern Michigan. Coming. 100% Eastern Michigan's playing really well. Um, we're coming off a win at Western Michigan on Saturday, um, which was a really big win for our program. And and I, I really believe that um, this team's got a chance to be very, very successful. We've been inconsistent here early, but uh, really looking forward to this uh, this week and, and the month of April. Keep the mojo going. You, you turn the lineup over, and then Tim Orr with a, with a big double on a go-ahead. And this was a series to where it, it seemed that Every inning or every game was was a coin flip, regardless of what the final score says. They get a couple of key hits in key moments on Friday and Saturday, and it was it was your time uh, on on Sunday, and that's huge. A hundred percent. Western Michigan's got a really good team this year. They're older. Uh, they're leading the league in hitting. You know, so very very potent offense, and and uh, they showed it at times. But I thought our pitching staff did a really good job all weekend. We just didn't defend. Um, like we have been all year. Uh, it's our first game in a long time on a natural surface. We've been playing on turf for a long time right now, and, and I, I don't think we adjusted. It took us a couple days to adjust to that. And uh, But however, we, we hung in there and was a real gritty win on, on for game three. And Cal Bickerstaff, uh, has, who's been really good all year long, um, was phenomenal on, on Sunday, giving us six innings. Uh, he's got, if you look at his numbers uh, for the whole year, I think he's got 40 punch outs and two, 40 strikeouts and two walks. And that's a pretty good guy to have on, on, on Sunday going for you, um, knowing that he's going to throw strikes and not give too many freebies. He feels his position. And uh, he's, been, he's, a, he's a big time competitor, and he's going to throw two pitches for a strike at all times. So I'm really happy in the way he performed and how he's been performing all year long. And it's a guy that's really embraced and grabbed the role of starter after being basically a fireman the, the last couple of years where he's coming in in high leverage situations, and now you're stretching him out and going, all right, it's your ball. Let's yeah. see it's, Let's see if you can get us five or six innings as opposed to pumping out for, say, four or five outs. No doubt. And, and as the season's gone on, you can see his confidence get better and better in every start. Um, he's getting used to the routine, and, and uh, I'm really happy for him. He's a leader on our team. He's, like I said, he's been ext he's always competitive. You know, he's going to give uh, his best bullet every time he goes out. And, um, I'm, I'm happy for him, and, and it, it's been a, a really good start to his season. And I can con I can see it uh, continuing to get better as it goes. Well, the starting pitching has been. Uh really a, a strong point for you guys for for much of the year, especially when you're pitching here at, at Schoonover Stadium because I, I can't tell you how fun it is to watch some of the – when your guys are dialed in and throwing strikes, like, there, there are a few there are a few staffs better in, in, uh, in the Mid-American Conference, and they'll be on display against a pretty good Eastern team that, come, come, like you yeah. said, coming off a sweep of, of Central Michigan, that's – when you get directional Michigans playing against each other, that's always a little bit of a of a rivalry. And Eastern's just a, a, a team that always has a couple of guys in the lineup that have video game numbers that they're tough outs, and they usually pitch and defend really well. Yeah, um, and that's what they're doing right now. Uh, so, but however, I, I feel like we have the team that uh, uh, it, it'll be a really good weekend for us because I want to see them, Matt. Like, let, let's go. This is a we're getting um, as we're going. We're, we're we're approaching the second half of the season. And we've we've been through a lot as a team early from like an adversity standpoint. I don't feel like we've hit stride, but I also feel like we're getting better and better. And I'm really looking forward to the second half of the season. And Eastern Michigan is a really good challenge coming in at six and three. Um, you know they they're beatable, right? Like in in the the big thing is is we don't beat ourselves. And I felt like we beat ourselves a little bit this past weekend. Um, Kent State beat Kent State more than. Western Michigan beat.
Kent State. Kind of note to the fans, it is Ohio 529 Kids Weekend. We're going to have a lot of cool stuff at, at the ballpark. And, I mean, you talk about a, a family-friendly and just a very cool environment over at you guys with, with Schoonover Stadium. It's it's a fun team to watch. You guys play fast. You play loose. You play fun. And, I mean, there's few better atmospheres than a nice warm day at the at the ballpark at Schoonover Stadium. 100% Schoonover. Um, it's been very good to our program here the last two years. And, and we're 7-1 and one at home right now. And please come out because uh, our guys, our players, they feed off of that energy at home and, and the fans and, and just the atmosphere of, of Schoonover Stadium as a whole, uh, the setting, all of it. It's a, If you want to watch a good college baseball game, please come out and, and support the Flashes. Yeah, doing some quick math in my head, I think the last 35 games at Schoonover Stadium, I think you've been on the right side of 31 of them. Yep, uh, 100%. So 31 and 4, we'll take that. Yeah, absolutely. So you all get started here this weekend against the Eagles, and then on Tuesday, Pitt comes into town. So a lot of great baseball ahead. Coach, as always, thanks for a few moments of your time. Thanks a lot, Dan. Appreciate it. Welcome back inside our Flash Talk studios, brought to you by Brian Hing and Cooling. Dan Griffin, pleased to be joined with DJ Smills. I know that our Flash's fans have seen you at a number of places on the ones and twos, but nice to have you in studio. Thanks for making your Flash Talk debut. Absolutely. Uh, pleasure to be here. Thank you for having me. So let's just kind of start at, at the beginning. Um, how, did, how did you get to be a, a house DJ? Like, where, where did that love of music and just... How did this all come to be? Yeah, I, I think it all began uh, high school. Uh, that, that's really where the blueprint really started. Having my mentors, uh, DJ Cairo, he's the official DJ for Progressive Field, Cleveland Guardians, and also uh, DJ Dare. He's a Cleveland DJ, residential, travels all, all around. And we had a singer project, and we had to get like 50 hours uh, shadowing work experience and seeing uh, everything that Cairo did with the formerly known as the Indians and currently as a guardian, seeing everything he did with them and, uh, you know, just just following the, the principles that he set and being ready when uh, college came around. So uh, when, I, when I first came to Kent, uh, main campus got involved with the radio station. They had a mobile DJ uh mobile DJ group, I guess you can call it, for the radio station. And uh, my first event was outside in front of the Mac Center. Uh, it was freezing cold. There was Swenson's out there. So, it, it, you know, I softened the blow. But um, I was like, no, I, I really want to be involved with athletics, you know, coming from an athletic background, baseball, basketball, and golf. You know, I felt it would be really fitting. And... Uh, yeah, talked to some of the people at the marketing office and, you know, uh, opportunity met preparation and here I am. There you go. That's, that's uh, the, the formula as coaches would always say for the, the opportunity is uh, just your, your availability plus obviously your, your prep. But just when you're developing a, a set list for, for a game, does it change from game to game based off of uh, the energy or what you're trying to accomplish? Or do you have like a, a go is like you've got your five to ten go to's and you kind of see where the, the night takes you from there on out. Yeah, so definitely have to have, with for uh, Giovanni Santiago, got to have Bad Bunny. <laughs> got to have Bad Bunny. He, uh, definitely a huge ba Bad Bunny fan. and um, But definitely for, like, the uh, conference games, uh, I remember when we were playing at school down the road, uh, I, I, I try to curate the playlist or what I'm going to play during the games for warm-ups. To, to cater towards the energy for the night, to really try to set the tone uh, for throughout the night. So how much homework do you do in, in advance? Because you, you mentioned that you're, you're talking to Gio and you know his go-to artist. How much are you spending, how much time do you spend with the student athletes getting to know them a little bit, knowing that maybe one guy is a huge, in Gio's case, bad buddy pain. That's going to put him in, a, in the right mindset for, for the game. Do you, do you, kind of catered to the, the student athletes? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think when I'm watching, when the game is about to start and I'm watching all the players on the screen and they're doing, the, uh, I believe it's the Meet the Flashes prompt and uh, seeing where all the players are from. Okay, I know this player's from here. I may play more of this artist this day. Or, you know, trying to cater to the artists that, uh, from their hometown, working it that way. So just doing a little homework and uh, observation. Well, more power to you, and uh, he'll be around Northeast Ohio, not just here on, on campus. You were at House 330 of this, this past weekend, and where can they find you throughout the 
the campus and throughout the summer? Yeah, just uh, uh, just posting updates on my social media at aka.smills. Feel free to check out my website at www.djsmills.com. And, yeah. There we go. He is uh, always keeping the juices flowing for us, DJ Smills. So thank you uh, very much for stopping by the Flash Talk set and, and uh, sharing some wisdom. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Let's take a look at what's going on around Kent State's campus. As always, we're brought to you by KSUTix.com. On Thursday, our women's gymnastics team will be up in Ann Arbor to take part in the NCAA regionals on Thursday afternoon. On Friday, our weekend gets started as our baseball team welcomes in EMU for Kids Weekend. It's a 6 o'clock first pitch at Schoonover Stadium. On Saturday, our football team has its first open practice, 2 p.m. at Dick Stadium. An hour later, our baseball team is back in action, taking on those very same EMU Eagles at 3 p.m. Again, it's day two of Kids Weekend. We wrapped a weekend on Sunday with women's lacrosse celebrating their seniors against the school down the road or their pregame ceremony Opening draw is at 1 p.m. At that same time across campus, Kids Weekend wraps up as our baseball team welcomes in EMU for the series finale. Plus, on Tuesday, baseball team back in action again, welcoming in the Pitt Panthers at 6 p.m. For tickets and information about your favorite Kent State sports, visit us on the web at kentstatesports.com or your favorite social media platform at Kent ST Athletics. Back with more Flash Talk, brought to you by Brian Heing and Cooling, right after this. Welcome back into our Flash Talk studios. As always, we're brought to you by Brian Hing and Cooling Dan Griffin. Talking a little women's lacrosse and assistant coach Amanda Glass. So nice and kind for you to take some time out of your day to, to join us. And uh, thanks for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I'm excited. Well, we've got a, a, a big week here for, for the squad as we get to celebrate another senior class, the class of 2024, and we get to do so in a rivalry game, which is really cool as the uh, the school down the road comes in for a, a 1 o'clock open draw at, at Dick Stadium this Sunday. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. A rivalry game, and you get the honor of the senior class. Yeah, I mean, it couldn't be better. Our senior class is something that's been so honored, I think, in a way, just based on their talents, what they contribute, how they lead, it's a really exciting day to have. Well, you've been a part of this program since day one, and it's nice that we're starting to develop senior senior classes, but, I mean, each one seems to be more important than the last because, like you said, they've all kind of built the, the foundation, and now the, that the, the program is really starting to take shape and, and take form and really start to take off. So just talk a, a little bit about the growth of this senior class from the day they stepped on the, the, the campus as freshmen to where now they're going to be walking out of here with a, hopefully a couple of MAC championships under their belt, but a lot of great memories and a degree in hand. Yeah, well, I mean, they probably have had – everyone has a unique – college experience they've probably had the most where their college freshman year was COVID and they've really leaned into the process of what it means to be a student athlete how to take care of stuff how to build relationships which was probably the hardest I think but they've done such a great job and then we've got Jackie who shoots <laughs> the ball like no other Taylor who is such a great goalkeeper Ella just as well is such a great vocal leader Lily, who is a force on the defense, and Anna, who is just now finally, you know, stepping up to a position that is rightfully hers. Well, talk talk a little bit about just the the leadership of this of this senior class because so often you you need that voice within the the team. You guys can only coach so much. So talk a little bit about like you said the relationship they've they've built, but them as as leaders as well. They've definitely found a voice and they've found a leadership role in that, like, you know, as a coach, your voice gets drowned out, maybe probably <laughs> too much. But they are the ones in the locker room bringing things together, making sure things are getting done. You know, we make a joke of it, but when we go out to dinner, we hit the shuffle button and they're always making sure that they're sitting with different people and just building relationships in that way. Well, I mean, that's phenomenal. Like we've always said, like the memories and the friendships they're gonna they're, they're gonna make are gonna last far beyond their uh, their in this case lacrosse careers. But uh, as a coach, do you do you like senior day? Do you do you like the, the the pomp and circumstance that goes with it? Because some coaches are like, yeah, we play. Like you can channel and harness that emotion, and you you play great. And others are like, man, we do it afterwards because I don't need my kids fighting back tears while they're trying to 
perform at a high level. Oh, I agree. It's a tricky situation. If we could do it privately, that'd be great. But it's also, I mean, the parents are so invested. They need that day, and the girls need it as well. So, Do, do you find that the, the team kind of steps up and, and plays – at another level because they're they're honoring that that senior class and there's and for whatever reason that game means maybe a little bit more i think so and we're in a unique situation where we actually have alums that come back on senior day so i think it's kind of twofold where it's not just honoring the current seniors but just what was well and and i'd i'd have to imagine that you guys are recruiting similar student athletes there and a lot of these kids probably played either with each other or against each other growing up to where that makes it to me it just gives it a, another level that the the rivalry may have for some of these kids have is gone on for for years and totally for and ironically we have one girl that's coming in who's a twin and her sister is going to akron so you know it's definitely with us well it it gets underway at, at 1 o'clock senior day a little bit before, so get there and, and check it out. We will have a, a lot of giveaways. I believe it's also a solar eclipse day, so we're going to prepare everybody for the, the Monday extravaganza. But thank you so much for a few moments of your time. Thank I you know that it's going to be a, a hectic week, but yeah. let's get them on, on Sunday. I agree. Thank you for having me. That's going to do it for this edition of Flash Talk, brought to you by Brian Heing and Cooling. We're off next week because, well, the eclipse is closing down the university, so we'll be back in two weeks to talk about the wonderful world of Kent State Athletics. For all of us here inside the GFTV studios, this is Dan Griffin saying goodnight and go Flashes. Go Flashes.